Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and welcome back to another vlog. For those who are visiting my channel for the first time, this video would give you an insight about how and what a pilot does before operating an international ultra long haul flight. And for all returning viewers and subscribers, welcome back. Today's flight is from Vancouver to Delhi with a flight time of about 16 hours and the distance of about 14,500 kilometers. And as the routing was slightly unusual, I had to do my homework before heading to the airport. In my previous vlog, I had posted a question regarding my routing from Delhi to Vancouver and quite a few of them have managed to get it right. Well, in this vlog, we'll just fine-tune those answers in a very simple and non-technical language as I walk you through the flight. It was about 10 am in the morning and the cabin crew safety briefing was already conducted about which I had spoken and shown in my previous vlog. In this flight, we are totally 19 of us, 2 captains, 2 first officers and 15 cabin crew working in 2 shifts. At times, the cabin crew stays in a different hotel but this time we were all put up in the same hotel and we had to take a same transport under reporting time before the flight was anywhere between 1 hour 30 to 1 hour 45 minutes. We generally get our flight related papers 4 to 5 hours before departure time so that you can run through it at your own pace without missing any crucial and critical information. It was bright and sunny and in spite of heavy traffic, we managed to reach the airport in about 45 minutes. With 1 hour 40 minutes for departure, I checked in and started signing off all the flight related credentials. With unusual routing, we were at a max takeoff weight and our fuel tanks were filled to the brim carrying about 1,85,000 liters of fuel. With outside air temperature rising, we might also have to offload some passenger luggage about which a detailed explanation has been given in this vlog. Complete and thorough briefing is being conducted and the final fuel and the final commercial payload that needs to be uplifted is generally decided at this time. The max structural takeoff weight for Boeing 777-300 is about 3,51,500 kgs and no matter what, you cannot be beyond this weight at the time you release your brake and commence your takeoff roll on the runway and hence it is addressed as max brake release weight. Well, in spite of carrying out all the calculations precisely, at times we land up being heavier than our max permissible takeoff weight. And trust me, it becomes quite challenging as you all by yourself, especially when you're departing out of airports from Europe and North America, as these airports are extremely busy. But how do I land up in such a situation in spite of doing all my calculations precisely? Well, the answer lies in this chart and this is my actual taxi routing operating out of Vancouver to Delhi. Might be a tricky question for those without an aviation background, but just give it a shot and try answering in the comment section about all the probable causes that causes us to be above a max permissible takeoff weight in spite of carrying out all these calculations precisely. And I shall get back to you on this with all the probabilities in one of the upcoming vlogs. And this was my actual routing from Vancouver to New Delhi and coming back to my question from my previous vlog, why did I fly a curved path? I could have flown straight, why didn't I fly a straight line? Well, it is actually a straight line and it appears to be a curved line and let me explain this to you. Any straight line drawn close to the poles where the longitudes converge on a globe which is spherical becomes a curved line when exactly projected on a flat piece of paper where the longitudes do not converge. And this is exactly the reason why Greenland which is about half the size of North America when projected on a flat piece of paper appears to be as big as North America. And having said that, the curved line that you actually see on a flat piece of paper is actually a straight line on a spherical globe which is also the shortest distance between the two places. 
Well, at times, commercial airlines actually do follow a curved path on a spherical globe in spite of having the shortest distance which is a straight line between the two points, that is between their departure and destination and this is mainly because of one main regulatory reason. And as per the regulation, that is the law, my route has to be planned in such a way that at any given point of time, there has to be an airport within one hour's flying time, that is roughly about 800 kilometers, to which I can divert and land in case of any emergency. And to make this happen, I keep my diversion airport in the center and draw a circle whose radius is about 800 kilometers and make sure my route is always within these circles. And depending upon the safety record of your airline, your airline could be approved to fly your route which could have an airport as far as 3200 kilometers, with which your route could be a straight line which would have been a curved line otherwise with an approval of 800 kilometers. And in aviation, we refer this concept as ETOPS or Extended Range Twin Engine Operations Performance Standards. I hope you guys are clear with the concept now and next time when you guys fly international and if you happen to see a curved flight path in your screens, you know what it is and why it is. Now the question for you all is, why wasn't this part of the flight flown straight? I was roughly flying about 38,000 feet and I would have easily cleared the Himalayan mountain range where the average terrain height is anywhere between 15,000 to 20,000 feet. If you know the answer, do let me know in the comment section and we shall discuss this in one of the upcoming blogs. And are these other people who had got the answer right for the question that I had posted in my previous vlog. In case if you guys happen to see me someday, just bother to say and hi, I got a small gift for you all. After all the passengers have deplaned, I completed my post-flight paperwork and completely drained and exhausted, I left the aircraft. Well, my transportation was already waiting for me and I headed to the hotel which was about 15 to 20 minutes away from the airport. And finally, we have reached the hotel famished and next day was my flight back to my base. As usual, the staff was very courteous and the check-in process was super quick. After freshening up, me and my first officer decided to have early dinner as we both were done for the day. And that's all for today guys. I hope you all learned something new and valuable. Do like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, God bless, stay blessed, bye-bye.